One time in high school, one of my buddies set me up with this girl from a different school named Steph. She was really pretty, and she wanted to go to this arcade because she said she had never been. I thought it was cool that a girl was interested in playing arcade games, so I was totally down. We went to this little arcade called Coinco. It was really small, and it probably doesn't even exist anymore, but I was just excited to be on a date. It went super well, by the way. Steph actually really liked video games, and she was a total natural. She killed it on every machine she got on. About an hour into the date, we saw this guy in a suit install this machine in the back corner of the arcade. Neither of us had either heard of it. It was titled Polybius in bright letters. Steph thought it would be cool to be the first person to play the new machine. She wanted to get her name on the leaderboard, and I agree, it was a pretty cool idea. Right away, I didn't like looking at it. it gave me this headache feeling, and Steph was totally fixated. It's like she got put in a trance or something. Not long after that, the date ended. I thought I did something wrong because she didn't talk to me for like 30 whole days. Until I got a phone call in the middle of the night. I recognized her voice anywhere, but she sounded crazy. She was talking about numbers and the statistics and how the game was inside of her. and She was the game now, whatever that meant. She was totally talking out of her head, but there was nothing I could do about it till the next day. So that's just what I did. Sure enough, the next day, she was there. I thought it was weird she was still in her pajamas, and she smelled like hell, which, you know, that definitely was not how it was when I first met her. It looked like she hadn't left the arcade in days, totally fixated in on this game. It was freaky. I wondered if she had even called me from the payphone outside the arcade. She had this freaky smile plastered on her face. I wanted to snap her out of it because she looked sick, and I felt bad for her second my hand almost touched her shoulder she totally lost it on me it looked like her head snapped around backwards and the next thing i remember is her tackling me to the ground her fingernails digging into me she snapped out of it for a second she was begging for my help saying that it was inside of her it was inside of her whatever that meant i wanted to help but it was too late the paramedics were already there dragging her off of me i didn't see her again after that and i damn sure didn't play the game Hey everyone, welcome back to Melody Ever After. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most dangerous government experiments that never happened. That's right, grab your tinfoil hats because today we're gonna be talking about the conspiracy of the Polybius video game. Picture this, it was the 80s. Can't picture the 80s? Okay, fine, you're on the set from Stranger Things. Neon lights. The sounds of quarters echoing in the slots of arcade machines and the dimly lit arcade. I'm getting hints of weed and B.O. and... Is that Aquanet? That's where the origin of Polybius apparently started. Popping up in some backwater arcades in Portland like some kind of glitch in the Matrix. Characterized by its seemingly plain branding, a black arcade cabinet with cyan title lettering, the game was supposedly a lot like Brain Trainer or Tempest. As the rumor goes, this creepy undisclosed arcade cabinet was dropped off in Portland arcades throughout the 1980s, starting around 1981 by Men in Black. No, not those Men in Black. And let me tell you, when kids started to play this game, they went crazy for it. Really crazy, like shaking and foaming at the mouth and having seizures and bad dreams crazy. People began to suggest that these kids were getting hypnotized from this game, and people were speculating that this could be some kind of government experiment or some kind of MK Ultra situation, maybe even some kind of alien technology that was dangerous and being tested on unsuspecting victims. People reported seeing these mysterious men in black collecting data from the inner workings on the back of the arcade cabinets and they weren't even interested in collecting the coins. That's when the rumor began to start that this was some kind of government operation. As quickly as these mysterious Polybius machines appeared, they vanished. And because this was about the year mm, 3 BZ, that's before Zuckerberg, for any of you wondering, there would be no way to trace the game before this age of internet that we are in because it didn't have good branding, it didn't have advertisement, and no one had any photos or videos circulating about it. How did this legend about a game that never existed, that disappeared as quickly as it appeared, somehow become one of the most notorious video game legends of all time? Qcoinop.com. 
an early forum on the early ages of the internet that was well and alive during the times of the 90s through the early 2000s, and posts are still made on it today. It's a real forum. And one mysterious post showed up, probably circa year 2000, about a person who was asking about information about this mysterious Polybius machine. Wondering, had anyone else played it? If I were alive in the late 90s, early 2000s, which I was alive in the early 2000s, just not sustainable. If I was alive during that time era, I probably would have fallen for something like this too. It's damn sure creepy and kind of believable. The post reads as follows. We need information. This game had a very limited release. One or two backwater arcades in a suburb of Portland. The history of this game is cloudy. There were all sorts of strange stories about how kids who played it got amnesia afterwards and couldn't remember their name or where they lived, etc. Bizarre rumors about this game are that it was supposedly developed by some kind of weird military tech offshoot group, used some kind of proprietary behavior modification algorithms developed by the CIA or something. Kids who played it woke up at night screaming, having horrible nightmares. According to an operator who ran the arcade with one of the games, guys in black coats would come to collect records from the machines. They're not interested in quarters or anything, they just collected information about how the game was played. The game was weird looking, kind of abstract, fast action with some puzzle elements. The kids who played it stopped playing other games entirely. One of them became a big anti-video game crusader or something. We've contacted one of the people who met him and he claims the machines disappeared after a month or so and no one ever heard of them again. Here's what we found so far. Found English strings, insert coin, and press one, player, start, and only. Looks like a one or two player game. The text in the game says, copy 1981, Sinislotion, maybe a German company? If anyone has heard any additional information about this game, we'd appreciate hearing about it. Quick update, we wanted to go on record here and say that Steven Roach is full of himself and no one knows anything about this game. We have it on good authority. No, Polybius is not a vector game. Does the screen look vector? No, it does not. We've recently received some new information about the game. Today's May 16, 2009. And yes, one of us is flying to Kiev, Ukraine area tomorrow. And yes, the trip is related to this information. Stay tuned. The final thing attached is a random start screen image. Oh, by the way, that little brand name, like the manufacturer of the game that the post says could be German, <laughs> isn't actually German, but it is a type of dialect that could be implemented in the German language. And when you look at the root words of it, it says something similar to sense delete, AKA sensory deprivation, which yeah, that checks out. The idea of the government using sensory deprivation tactics was a real fear that was implemented by actual experiments that were going on. And the deep state of the 1980s. The government actually did experiments where they saw how sensory deprivation worked in accordance with psychotics and things like that. Look into MKUltra. Some people, you know, I, I believe in MKUltra. MKUltra was definitely a thing. May not be the thing we think it is, but it was a thing. So that kind of fear of sensory deprivation, something that would starve your brain off from any surrounding sensory, is a real fear the person who created this Polybius legend really instilled in there. Excellent touch, cherry on top of the cake. Unfortunately, as believable as this all may seem, this entirely was a hoax. I'm sure that you haven't been able to guess that by now, that there was no video game that caused children to go crazy and be brainwashed. What? Except for Fortnite and maybe what are we Minecraft? What are we hitting the Gwitty over here? You have bared witness to the source of one of the first ever creepypastas, or even dare I say, internet ARGs uh, that ever existed. The legend of Polybius was developed sometime in the early 2000s, late 90s, and th this is one of the first ever experiences we see of some people role-playing and pretending to interact with something that never existed. Of course, the post on coinop.com was a total hoax, as the image that was supposedly a saved image from the gameplay would require ROM, R-O-M data, to be obtained in order to get an image like that. And it's similar to like a screenshot or a download, but as you know, you can't download anything that you don't have. You can't take a screenshot of something that isn't real. Apparently in 2017, someone even requested a report from the Federal Department of Justice requesting by the Freedom Information Act to 
have the U.S. government admit if there was anything involved with the Polybius game, if the Polybius game ever existed, if this was a government experiment. And of course, that report came back totally clean. The Federal Department of Justice was like, we don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. That's not real. But I don't know if I had an evil game that caused children to be brainwashed military soldiers that used alien technology, I wouldn't be admitting it. This seems like something that someone guilty would say. That sounds exactly what, what an evil government scientist would say. Okay, moving on. If this post is fake and all of these people are lying and nobody actually played the Polybius game in the 1980s, how did it become such a huge legend? How come there's people on Reddit to this day who fully believe that they played that game? A lot of people fed into the Polybius rumor for a lot of reasons. One, it was nostalgic. I mean, who doesn't love a good 80s sci-fi kind of mystery? I mean, we're all guilty of it. But the main thing is early internet life forms, which would later evolve into what we know today as internet trolls, totally played into this post. People began talking about their experiences with this game in forums, and it became this kind of alternate reality game type thing where people on the internet had this inside joke between one another, and they created this lore for the game. That's how we get this standard branding, how we ended up with actual pictures of the game. Later, I'm talking decades later, people even began building fake game cabinets of Polybius all for the bit. Like these craftsmen, there were other people who took it to the extreme. There's actually a podcast called The Polybius Conspiracy that I highly recommend listening to if you like creepypastas and ARGs. Because of the references to actual posts from coinop.com, as well as making up fake names, aliases, fake interviews, you would think that something like this is real. So some people have absorbed this fake role play media and are convinced that it happened. Other than podcasts and posts and investigation groups on places like Reddit and Facebook, there are also people who have taken the initiative to recreate what they believe the game Polybius would be like. Probably the most effective reason that people started full-heartedly believing in the Polybius legend is because the power of suggestion is one hell of a drug. If you read enough material and convince yourself that something is real, you're gonna believe it. Just like your weird uncle who thinks 5G towers are causing cancer. Answer. It's it's the same thing. This is my formal apology to anyone who believes the previously stated conspiracy who I have caused to become offended. All of your thoughts and opinions are valid. Please do not dox me. And honestly, if you're interacting with something that much, of course you're gonna believe it's real. Also, there's probably people out there who did play some unmarked video game that had some flashing lights or crazy effects that gave them some headaches or made them nauseous, feel like they're gonna throw up. And to be honest, playing some of those games in that dark, stinky arcade probably did make some people a little sick. What do you mean nausea, seizures, and migraines are normal effects of being in the arcade? No, I'm telling you, something is not right with that game. It's definitely not the repetitive RGB flashing LED lights at me or the smell in here. It's definitely not that. The important takeaway from this is that the legend of Polybius is one of the oldest internet legends that ever existed. There's a few other creepypastas and ARGs that people role played and pretended, you know, in the early days of trolling. Just look at the entire Blair Witch Project marketing department. That was crazy. But the coolest thing about the Polybius legend is how it shaped our culture, especially in the gaming world. And it's kind of fun to think about the idea of a secret government game that brainwashes children. It's spooky, it's fun. And in the spirit of all things fun, let people believe it. Ask not what Polybius can do for you. Don't go try to find Polybius, it doesn't exist. Instead ask, what has Polybius done for our country? And the answer to that is make some pretty cool urban legends and inspire some pretty awesome media. And most importantly, the main thing that you should be taking from this story is that you can't believe everything you see on the internet, especially when it involves government organizations against the public. Now. If you excuse me, I've got a clan of very angry lizard people who live under my house that I need to go confront. Until next time.